Welcome to another episode of the State of African Agriculture. Today we have Alaji MD Abubakan. He's the founder and managing director of LNZ Integrated Farms based in Kano, Nigeria. We'll be discussing the challenges and opportunities in the Nigerian dairy sector. Join me. Alaji Abubakar, thank you for joining me today. How are you? I'm very well, Leonde. Thank you for having me. Thanks for being with me this morning. So LNZ is a family-owned dairy processing business. You're involved in the entire dairy, dairy value chain, from production to marketing, producing fresh milk, yogurt, fried de nunu, ice cream, and chicken. Please tell me about the journey, the LNZ journey, how you started, and what the process is like. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, uh, it's been a long, hectic journey. It's... Uh, almost two decades now. Yeah. Um, uh, we started actually as a passion, just um, interest and then uh, ultimately passion now transforms to business. So that's, that, that wouldn't be much better way of living than having your passion, passion giving you money. Mm-hmm. So that's what we've been able to achieve along the line. Um, so, uh, as I told you, we started as a family business and still is strongly a family business. My entire family is involved. Um, so, we, we, we started with the establishment of cattle, as I told you, for passion, just to have a ranch that you go and have some good relationship with nature. And then uh, we realized the cows have started giving milk and uh, we started thinking of what do we do with the milk? Then an idea came that why don't we start processing the milk? But it was very, very low quantity, five liters. And uh, we felt it's not worth doing it. But um, along the line, we insisted, why not? Let's, let's try, even if it's just process and dash and then drink some, it's, 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 it's good adding value. So value addition came to mind immediately and we thought of, how we go about it. And uh, we sponsored one of us to go to Netherlands and attend a training on dairy processing. And then by the time she comes back, she was an authority. And uh, it was like a joke sending somebody spending so much for an exchange to train someone to process five liters of milk. But at the end of the day, we were happy we took that funny decision. Um, so when we came back, we started processing the five liters. And then there was incentive because the five liters now became uh, uh, a hot sell uh, okay. because there was no no nowhere someone can get fresh milk, but we have an outlet that that we in, we were selling groceries, so we introduced that into it, and we realized that it's just an hour. Uh, within a week, we realized that it became a booking thing. People were queue to wait for it. Just said, okay, oh. if that's the case, we, it, there's incentive for us to improve on the productivity of the animals. Uh, and you know, it's just like uh, chicken. The, what you give is what you get. If you give good nutrition, you get good eggs. You give good nutrition to the cows, you get more milk and more nutritious milk. So, uh, a one liter local cow, when we improve on its nutrition, we realize some are even giving us up to five liters. So, we now had incentive to improve because we can afford to incur cost on the productivity of the animal because we can get bias and uh, we make profit. So while we did that, we exhausted the capacity of our local cows. Then uh, we thought of um, bringing in exotic because we realized that it's exotic cows that can give you higher yield per uh, animal. Uh, But there was a problem there because uh, yeah, there will be more milk yields, but tropical diseases, temperature and other environmental factors will not allow an exotic animal to to, to to survive in our climb. So uh, we went through the literatures and see what has been the solution around other countries like uh, in the tropics like India, Kenya and, and others. So we realized that uh, they've been able to improve the bloodline of their local cattle in terms of milk yield and then reduce the 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 tropical disease component of the gen, 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 gene, if you like. So we thought we could do same. So we bought an exotic bull 100% and we 
now started natural mating to crossbreed our own local cows. And then about a year later, we have an F1, which is the first female generation. Of course, it could not give you the exotic cow's level of milk, but it can uh, give you higher than the local, and it has the, the, the protection of the local diseases. So at uh, what point did you decide that yeah, so you want to scale up this business and you'd be like, okay, you want to take it from being a family business, which is still a family business, to a sustainable, profitable business. At one point, did you decide that? And how did that happen? Yeah, I think at the point, uh, we started collecting people's milk and paying them. We realized at that point, definitely, you know, you could only sustain that if you're making money to pay these people because yeah. there's no subvention or any subsidy committee. The last point. But the ta at, the, at what point did we start decide to scale is when we started getting overwhelmed by the inflow of milk, particularly when we engage the pastoralists now. The milk inflow became so much. So we now say, look, we cannot process this. The equipment we have, our processing capacity, needs to be improved upon and that is when at a point we that incidentally that's what Fafin was coming into being and then we all went into it and thankfully it's we have even uh, uh, done the five years that we're supposed to do with them it has been successful we are one of their most successful investments and we're the first investee so it's a good oh, okay. story both, I uh, didn't know that yeah it's a good story for both LNZ and Fafin so um, we, 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 we brought them in at the right time and then they invested in us and we improved on our processing capacity. And then, uh, so- Can you tell us more about it for how you became investment ready? I want you to talk us more about that process. Yeah, so uh, we, the, the, the most important thing is what an investor really want to see in a business. To attract to to attract his investment or what incentive is there most importantly is is the business profitable will he put in money and get his return on investment uh the uh, at the right price and at the right time so i i think at the time we brought in five in we are almost at that level um uh, we 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 we're not uh, the corporate governance was not superb uh the the due diligence done shows a lot of gaps but it, it's the, there are no gaps that were deal breakers so to say there are things that could be closed and and i think one beautiful thing about five when they're coming and thank sahel for such an, a good effort we're able to come in with a fantastic corporate governance culture we able to improve on our management style we're able to separate the pockets clearly. What is MD's pocket, MD Abu Bakr and his family's pocket is different from LNZ pockets. We have uh, uh, the capacity of the management is improved upon. ISO standard is being worked on. Consultants came in, studied gaps, filled them. So it's it's been wonderful. That is aside the money. And in fact, that was the attraction in the first instance. The money, yes, is good. It came in and improved on what we did. But the most important thing is when you put the money, how do you ensure that you do the right thing for the money to remain in the business and even bring in some money back to, to shareholders? And I think that is the, the greatest achievement. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's a great story. I'm happy about that. And you're reaching your fifth year. But I also want to talk about, so you scaled thanks to the access to finance. But you now have different products. I want to talk about more about your products because I go to the stores, I go to spa shop, right? I see L and Z yogurts. The vanilla one is my favorite, actually. So I want to oh, talk about how you. you created the products and how you've been able to reach these different markets from Kano to Lagos and even not just Lagos, so Abuja, Southwest, not how you've been able to do that and your different products. Yeah, uh, uh, and South, South, South is our number two market. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, so. Uh, uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, so something like that. So we put in a lot of efforts uh, in making sure that uh, we get the natural thing, and people are health conscious. Uh, and 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 when you test, the difference is very clear. So that you can't compare what is natural to what is artificial. I must tell you. And so, fortunately for us, uh, we don't even have the capacity to temper. With the natural constituents of the milk so we have no option but to give you natural as it comes 
So, mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so that turns out to be our advantage because when you test others that are dependent on imported, pardon me, they can't give, yeah, they can present a beautiful packaging and then right. uh, wonderful marketing. Uh, but at the end of the day, it, it boils down to what product are you testing? When you get the test without all the packaging, you know that this is natural. This uh, has no artificialities in it. This is, uh, you're not afraid of cancers and all sorts of kidney diseases because you are sure you can easily trace. We always share our processes, the entire value chain from production to processing to marketing. You can see. That's why it's not easy for our products to get into the market. We need to provide uh, culture and infrastructure from the raw material through process right to the shelves. So um, this is the most difficult aspect of our business, but it turns out to be uh, our advantage in the market. So I, I think, if anything, that is it. Then we now differentiated actually to different SKUs. We started with... Uh, with, with yogurt because that was popular. We tried fresh milk, but Nigeria's culture of fresh milk, uh, it's very poor because the test bots over years have been disturbed by evaporated and yeah. hardened milk. So a Nigerian, even in their countries where they sell fresh milk, you <laughs> find powdered milk. You have to go exactly. to Nigerian supermarket in London to buy powdered milk and evaporated milk because over the years, the, our tongue has been abused. Mm -hmm. So, and it will take time for us to realize that and come back to reality. So, but we can't afford to, 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 to be out of business within that time before we realized our, 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 our tongue's value. So we had to go with the, we have to go with the, with the, when mm -hmm. we realized that soured milk product sells very well. So that's why we ventured into yogurt. But over time, and then we reduced the fresh milk. But once... Okay people realize, and the market is there. For instance, in Kano and Abuja, we still sell fresh milk. But to travel all the way from Kano to Lagos, for instance, to deliver a seven-day shelf life product that will expire and you start bringing it back to destroy, it doesn't make any better yeah. sense. Yeah, so that's why we have to slow down on fresh milk delivery to these distances. But close by, we still deliver fresh milk. So yogurt, yes, that's how we came into it. But Fura and Onu is a local delicacy, and uh, we realized health wise that millet is even much better than wheat. No, all the problem with wheat does not is not in millet, and yeah. we realize that millet is a whole meal. And uh, so when we mix it, so there you are, you have a natural yogurt, you have millet mixed together, granulated millet, and then you, you are sap. So there's nothing much healthier than that right. drink. So it serves our local test needs as well as introduce a new healthy drink into the market. And, and this has been a test chip. And it's testy. So, so, yeah, it's so nice. even those that is not, they are not culturally inclined to take it now, they have realized that fry is a healthy and yeah, okay. and, and, and people are going for it. Yeah. So and this uh, is one of the areas that we have uh, export potential. In. So uh, then the, the the butter yes we started butter we had to slow down the butter okay. butter is one of our is one of our sorry story of what Nigeria has come to be. I recall there was a time there was challenge in foreign exchange and a foreign company in Lagos that used to import a lot of butter from Germany asked us if we can produce butter because they could not access foreign exchange to bring in butter from their German source. We said why not so. Uh, we went in, we invested in butter processing equipment. We spent a lot of dollars to bring in the equipment. We produced the first batch. They took it to Germany. It was tested. One beautiful thing, when the result came back, ours was much better than the German product. For the simple fact that our cows give low milk yield. So just common sense, it has high fat content. So at the end of the day, theirs is a, they are high volume milkers. So the fat content is diluted, not as high as ours. Ours is about 35 to 40. There's you have 28 to 30. So by the time we produce the butter, even in Germany, they say this, if it continues, we may start exporting to them. So we brought, we did the first trial, the boom, federal government provided foreign exchange to these companies to import butter. So that's how we wasted our investment. We lost our investment in the production line. And they could not, they couldn't keep the awards of patronizing us. Then uh, that's how we lost that. So uh, 
that's why we're always cautious about uh, uh, policy somersaults. Yeah. A typical example of what policy somersaults can do to a business. And that's one of the reasons we're very thankful to CBN for not for, for taking the bold step of not allowing dairy products to access uh, foreign exchange for imports. It's, it's, it's a wonderful step. That is a bold step that 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 hardly you find people with political will yeah. that can do that. And it's it's actually quite, yeah, yeah, it's quite it. unfortunate. Hopefully, we'll get to a point where you can actually produce for them, even though you started and you made that investment. But we also want to talk about, I know there's been, if I'm, I want to, I know there's been a ban in importation of fresh uh, packaged milk as well. So has this policy opened opportunities for investors to come into the dairy no, there's sector? No there's no ban? Yeah, there's no, no ban yet. Uh, what's happening well, in is uh, in the policy was, was uh, yeah, that, uh, no, all, all this is, 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 not, is, is, is not true. Nothing, there's no increase. In fact, it's cheap. It's better for you to import dairy products than to import dairy equipment in Nigeria today. Is that, is that terrible? Uh, and and just uh, two days ago, I, I I was surprised. There's even some taxes for agri products. If you are moving with powdered milk from Kano to Lagos, nobody charges you any tariff. But if you are taking fresh milk or fresh milk product from the farm going to Lagos, you'll 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 be taxed. So there's a lot of incentive disincentive in farming in, in agri production due to. Uh, because nobody cares. That's all. Because I I was shocked. I paid. It's a tax now. Uh, it's a, let me. I have I've I have the name of the. It's an association that just jumped from nowhere and decided to be taxing agri products along the highway. And and being a country where everybody making it more difficult. Wants. Yeah, making it more difficult. So they, they're in a way saying that we are in, discouraging. Uh, it's called Nigerian Association of Agricultural Product Dealers an enforcement team of food security in partnership with Federal Ministry of Agri and Rural Development. So they are doing anything but food security insurance. So once you establish an agency, government establish an agency, which is means to help, instead of helping, what they do is to yeah. make sure this, they, this intensify, they incentivize. So this, these are some of the things that you, you can't just get your head around, head around it. So, so some of this uh, double taxation uh, policies that will, will, that kills agri production, they abound. They abound. So these are all the things that a, a serious uh, a, a serious agri uh, development program should address. And from uh, an investor point of view, you are in yeah. the sector. What are some of the challenges that you face, and what are the key things that government can do to help an enabling environment for policies like this? Yeah, you see, every business, all that that business want is conducive environment, enabling environment. One, you produce and sell in your market. So the government should look, and that's the essence of the establishment of Federal Ministry of Industries or Commerce or whatever they call themselves, so that they will now look and see how, what are the things that are not enabling business to thrive. This is why they look at the tariff. This is where they look at the, 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 if you say, okay, tariff cannot be raised because of some treaties we entered. Other countries, how are they doing it? They call it levies. At the end of the day, it's just to discourage dumping. But yeah. this is a country where dumping is the in thing. So yeah. until that is addressed, they will only be pay lip service to, to open grazing challenges to all these things because there are things that will be done to address these things through policy, simple. And everybody will benefit. It will be good for the country. It will even be good for the people that at the initial stage becomes victim of such policy. Ultimately, it will benefit them. So we are looking at the tariff. We want tariff review. We want uh, to even review the customs uh, the, the Customs Act is 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 custom a revenue revenue generator or or or, or trade enablers. Are, are they supposed to encourage trading or to 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 raise revenue? Because these are two 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 yeah, conflicting yes. things that you if you say customs should generate 
that and you are you are, you are treated you are, you are, you are assessed based on the amount of money you, you no, know, yeah, I mean, they have no incentive to 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 reduce to to review tariff downwards in any way the, the, the thing is collect 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 so i want to go back onto open um go back to the topic of open grazing and you've talked to you've worked with your experience with edman and we know we have the edman farming crisis the farming edman crisis right now what advice can you give to mitigate this crisis? Because you've worked with communities where you've been able to encourage them to stop open grazing because it's more profitable. So what advice can you give to other communities to replicate this? What's the way forward? That is a win-win for both parties. Uh, is it a community thing? I think it's a, it, it's, it's a, it's a government thing. All, as, I, as, I, as I said earlier, all you need to do is incentivize a business there will be automatic backward integration. But let the backward integration be done rightly. You come backward, integrate into importing cows that will take 60 years to give the, the, the necessary milk we have. When you have 20 million cows roaming the streets, backward, integrate into bringing this together into cooperatives and then establishing a milk collection center there and evacuate the milk to your factory. These are the low-hanging fruits. And this could, be, this could make the daily need of the country to be achieved in less than a year, I can tell you. If you want to backward integrate as, an, as a multinational, do as some have started doing. Organize this, establish a ranch, work with the state government, let the government lease you a ranch, not to the, not to the wanderers. Then you bring the wanderers into your own cooperative system that, and then now start collecting Milk from them, and then improve on the on their on, on on their on their hard genetics. This within no time because they have it. They have the skill. They will, and this is only not. You see, I don't want this cultural thing. I want the business thing. So don't limit it to the Fulanis, because there are no Fulanis in Denmark, no Fulanis in Kenya, no Fulanis in India. They produce the highest volume of milk in the world. Because it's a business, not a culture. So now everybody should come into the fold. Let the youth move in straight. Let them buy cows. Let them start rearing cows. Let them start bringing you milk. So now it will not be it will not be aligned to a particular ethnic group. It will become a business. And so once it becomes a business, the ranching model has established. So it's now if you feel as an ethnic person is roaming that you want to do, then a policy or a law will come that anybody is still roaming because there are people that have demonstrated they can do this thing. Either go and join and do this thing rightly or anybody outside this enclave is deemed a criminal. So this is a simple solution to it. Not the, not the political noise we are hearing. Not at all. It's very, no, nobody open grazing help. Exactly. Nobody, even those that are moving with the cows, them open. Let me give you an example. This open grazing is not restricted to cows. If you are moving from north to the south, you will see all the villages, goats moving around freely. They are also into open grazing. These goats, if the woman takes that goat to the market, and then you now decide to go and establish a goat farm, and you rear your farm, you bring in a vet doctor, you employ an accountant, you employ security. At the end of the day, you go to the same market with a woman that takes her goat with no cost at all. If she sells that goat at 10,000 naira, that is the profit to her. You, you sell that goat at 50,000 uh, 50 naira, uh, 50, naira, you may not be able to break even. Who does open grazing of goat helps? But if you now come and say, look, mama, Car, give your goats in one place. Feed it very well. It will attract more value. Of course, she will now have to take responsibility for her goats. She will take it to the market. It will attract more value. It helps her. Not 10,000 now. She will make double that amount. And you that has no relation with her that is keeping your goats in the ranch will also take it to the market. And it will give you, it will, it will, it will, it will fetch you the right pricing. So, so also cows, the same thing. This open grazing is not helping anybody. Those that are practicing it, 
those that are not practicing are doing ranching, that has direct negative effect on the entire business scale. Then come in with insecurity along with it. Even if there's no insecurity for business purpose, it's not good. It's more of political than 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 business. So once it becomes a business, look at as a business. I'm sure we'll, we'll get we'll get out of it. And so, our association, which you have not mentioned, commercial dairy <laughs> ranchers association. You know, we're advocates of ranching even before the ranching became music in okay. Nigeria. Yes, and, uh, and and we're always willing to cooperate with state government and anybody as an association this time around to work okay. out a model, to work out an arrangement. I think we've started talking with some uh, one government. or two governors in the southeast that. Uh, we're going to look at it. It's the indigenous of those areas. You can have a fantastic relationship. So market development is the way forward, key area. It is. It is. Once the market is developed, once the incentive for the market is there, once the, 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 the local milk will go and sell higher than the imported milk, then people will start, will start investing. You can invest. And you know, the, the, the streams... Uh, we have the upstream where you have the production, you have the midstream where you have the aggregation, collection, and evacuation. You have the downstream where you have the processing and the marketing. The multinationals dominated that 99%. The midstream that links the production and the, uh, and, and the processing is zero investment. And this backward integration is not touching this midstream. Yes. You understand? So until right. that is developed, that is where the opportunity is in Nigeria today. That is where the opportunity is in Nigeria today. You can decide to go and, okay, aggregate the milk. You don't have to have a single cow. You don't have to have a single processing facility. All you need to do is go and be smart enough to organize farmers into groups and establish a milk collection and then start evacuating the milk. But if you forget that, will the multinational buy at the right price from you? No, they won't. Yes. And that is where it's forced by policy to buy from you. And that's only when your own business will become sustainable and it will attract both foreign and local investment in that area. Thank you. Thank you. I want us to also, before you round it up, I want us to talk about some of the CSR projects you've done with LNZ in terms of poultry with women farmers and um, education with Edsman's family. Can you discuss more on that? Yeah. Um, it's a, more of a... Um, uh win win it's not csr per se uh, but if in the process it looked like csr fine and good uh but what we do is a shared value it's a shared value rather than csr so what okay. we do is uh, yeah we now for instance ask you okay we want milk from you we want to sell and make money so when you provide milk to us you provide our raw material we are happy we pay you you make money you're equally happy so it's a win-win situation so at the end of the day uh what we looked at at the initial stages okay um what we were doing we, we were as we are as we are investing okay. we are involving the local populace we are very conscious of two things environment and child labor so that we make sure we we don't we don't get entangled in these very bad practices so uh we realize that most of the milk hawking was done by girl child most of the hardening of the animals is done by boy child so our coming into that should not encourage it, but discourage it. So what the first thing we attract, we did was, when we start collecting the milk by coming to the doorstep, it stopped the uh, business of moving into towns, carrying of milk selling along the streets by the girl child. She is now free. We free her from that entanglement. So freeing her, again, there's another, pro they said, uh, um, idle mind is a devil, devil workshop or something. Yeah. So we, we, yeah. So we, we try to say, okay, how do we engage this girl child? So we now said, okay, can you please send this girl child to school? 
if she's not hawking milk because we're taking the milk off you. Mm-hmm. And so uh, some agree somewhere resisting that, okay, they are not doing it, we'll find something for them. Oh, we even married them off much earlier. We say, okay, you know what? For every household that sends a girl child to school, it has a 20 naira incentive on a liter of milk we buy. So now you see that multiplies um, by a lot of liters, it means a lot of money to them. Yeah. So, so this now makes them to be happy to do. And they started sending the, the children to school and claiming their 2020 Nera. And this this really worked wonderful for us. And then it's someone very... else said, okay, some yeah, some say they don't have a girl child, it's only boys they have. So does it mean they should say they should send the boys and say, okay, look, is you know from now? Anybody that say anybody to school has 20 naira to and ultimately we realize that almost everybody is sending everybody to school. So we say, okay, now wow. this community, instead of making it a household, we say, okay, this community is like you have achieved a hard limit of sending children's school, if 70 mm-hmm. to 80 percent of the members of that community send their kids to school, so we'll buy a little of milk from that community at this rate, 20 that I increase. So it's higher. So the, then instead of becoming a household competition, it becomes an inter-community competition. Okay, in that community, they are selling at, why is ours cheaper? No, no, because they are sending their kids to school. Oh, that's simple. We'll also do, so <laughs> once you say? achieve that yeah, threshold, then we increase the Right at that's, that's actually a great yeah, and I, I can tell you we've, we've, yeah, we've achieved almost 100% that you can't even see the difference now when you come you don't, I don't think that any community we buy less so wow. it becomes a uniform price now yeah, uh, yeah that's but a great we, but, job uh, then we went, yeah yeah we went ahead what we realized is uh, if we're giving them the money it's not necessary that they should they are removing the money to pay the school fees because some will now say yes they don't like it's out of school they are bigger. Yeah, and so what we did is we have to establish a fund now. We call it a, a, a school, so I can't remember the name, it's, it's, it's handled by one of my staff. What we do now, we call for, okay, look, uh, and, and a lot of people became interested, look, how can I help? How can I get, we say, okay, look, we have a fund now. And we now say, okay, we can match you with the sponsorship. We can share a picture of a girl or a boy, and then now, you will be the sponsor directly. You will be like a foster parent from Lagos. We have a lot of Lagosians that are uh, that are parenting some of our kids here. Oh, that's so a great, you, great initiative. Yeah, you go to school, then we'll be sharing the school report with you, and then you'll be seeing the progress. And when they pay the school fees, we send the receipts to you. You'll be watching, you see them. If we want us to link you up with the boy or the parent, we can do that easily. And if you don't want us, you just want to pay the money, you want us to take the button, we gladly do that as well. And we have a department that handles that. Oh, so this is the level of sure. we hope we hope we, we we're going we're going to do much better. It's it's a great initiative, great job to LNZ for doing that. And I hope other communities can also replicate that. That's very interesting. I've not heard anything like this before in the agri community. So great job. Kudos to you. That's great. Thank so you. to wrap it up, June first is World Milk Day. And we are, uh, World Milk Day is to recognize the importance of milk as a global food and to celebrate the dairy sector. What message do you have to emphasize the importance of milk and the dairy sector to curb malnutrition? Yeah, I think my message is always in one. One, uh, I say congratulations to dairy consumers and dairy farmers. And uh, we have two events, one at L and Z that comes up in Kano, one at the association level that almost all dairy farmers, those that are involved in backward integration and production are involved with, it's coming up on the 1st of June in Abuja at uh, NAV uh, Conference Center. A uh, lot of talk, uh, we're going to have international uh, and those from the academia to give talks on dairy and dairy production. I am going to be there, I will be uh, a guest speaker as well. Uh, so we have a lot of, lot of Talkers, it's going to be it's going to be good. Uh, we've been struggling as Kodaran to get uh, people to realize this, and I think we are achieving that, and we are so mm-hmm. grateful. So this is what we have, and then my message on dairy to consume. 
please. All that you see is written on dairy products. It's an information for you to take an informed decision. Know what that means. When you see a milk that is written filled milk, go and search what does that mean so that you know what you're consuming. When you see whole milk, go and search what does that mean so that you know what you're consuming. When you see UHT milk, go and search and find out what, what that means. When you see fresh milk, product go and find out what that is and take an information know what you are consuming and once you know what you are consuming you become a king onto yourself because you take an informed decision you just don't take anything that tastes like milk or with beautiful adverts some misleading and at the end of the day you even give your own child what that person that produced cannot give his own child it's a very unfortunate situation we see. So we need to be highly educated on dairy product consumption. I think that is what it's like. And I'm not here to, to the market or to... So that's why I leave it, leave it for you to get, your, to get educated. Those that are not educated, unfortunately, that's one of the price you pay for being illiterate. And I think that's where the government should step in and help those people. But those of us that can read and write, I think... We have an advantage. We should take advantage of it and make use of it by reading, understanding, and know what we are taking. Please and please know the difference. When they say fat-filled milk, what does that mean? When they say full cream milk, there are some brands the same, but they make it very clear. This is filled milk, this is full cream. Why the difference? Why don't you know you just consume? So I think this is my message to dairy consumers. And another thing is be very careful about liquid milk. Anything liquid imported. So this is my sincere message okay. to my fellow countrymen, particularly those that consume milk. Thank you very much, Aladji Abubakar. Thank you for your time today. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Yohandi, for having me anytime.